So, good morning, everyone. Yeah, today, yeah, we are going to start out my lecture about the mechano tree induction. So, I will call the name of this lecture is Cell Sense Materials. So, maybe you guys have some little feeling how the cells touch the material and perceive the material. So, also, you can think about the material can consist of um, synthetic material like polymer, metal, and ceramic, as well as um, their uh, cell derived or tissue derived material like collagen, fibril, extracellular matrix. So, when you say material, you, you have to think two types of material yeah. synthetic and uh, tissue, tissue derived or cell derived material. So, yeah. Basically, for, uh, from the next eight weeks, I'm gonna talk about this mechanical transduction one, two, three, four, in terms of adhesion integrin, focal adhesion, and migration nuclear mechanics and three D dynamics. So, I maybe some of you guys already know this kind of concept, but I want you guys to to remind this concept, and then maybe if you have any missing point you can increase your knowledge. That's the purpose of this lecture. So uh, this is the total feature of our mechano trans transduction. So as you can see, this is some, yeah, this is some ECM, which is called collagen or your fabricated material. And then this is a cell. So when you think about, think about the cell, you have to consider the cell as a city, small city, or the human beings. So let's say this is your body. And how the cell touch the material? How the cell sense the outside of the environment? Through the integrates. So like your hand or foot. Maybe it's more related to your hands or finger. So integrin consists of alpha and beta integrins. Okay, so alpha beta integrin they can sense the collagen, and then at a certain point they make some signal to make or polymerize this affectin, right? And then to link this affectin and integrin uh, receptor. Also, we can call the integrin as a uh, receptor of this mechanical cues, uh, sorry, this material cue. Yeah. So if you think about the receptor, most of people just think gross factor receptor or other kind of uh, biochemical receptor. But also, integrin can be named as a receptor for material cue. So this receptor, integral receptor, they sense and touch the collagen outside the micro environment and then to link affectin and the integrin they, they make have this four car that complex so including tallin, SRC, vinculin, paxilin, FAK and then this affectin they cannot move along they need some motor which is myosin 2 so people call it non-muscle myosin 2 because Myosin uh, originally derived from the muscle tissue, muscle cell, but non, also non-muscle cell, they can have this myosin. So they can call it, as a nickname, non-muscle myosin 2. So abbreviation of NMM2, okay? And then alpha actinin, they can uh, harmonize this affectin and affective filament. So as a bundle, so one affectin, like they have double helical structure, and then this one affecting two affecting can be linked by alpha actinin. So you can, when when you think about, let's assume you stain the cell, and then you want to see how the cell touch the ECM, and then first you can stain with affecting, right? Cold. We can stain affectin by affectin antibody or phalloidin. 
Okay, I'm going to talk about the wide role of the valoid later. So this is affecting, and then also when you want to see the focal adhesion, and then you can st you can stain with antibody of vinclin, paxilin, fac, and SRC or talin. Also, some people want to look at the alpha actinin. Yes, and then after the ending point of the, this affectin. This is some Nesprin 1, 2, and Sun. So we can call this, this kind of uh, affecting ending and then nuclear envelope protein is called link complex. So you, you guys have two complex. One is link complex to link affecting and nuclear envelope. The other one is focal complex to link affecting and integral receptor. So from the cell side, uh, between I mean, in the middle of the affecting, focal dead complex, and then link complex. Link complex consists of Nesprin 1, 2, 3, 4, and Sun 1, 2, and MRN, or other kind of things. So now you touch the nucleus envelope, and then also in the inside of the nucleus envelope, you can see this or not, or except the chromosome, this chromatin, chromatin they have like that. And then this chromatin also can be tightly linked to this uh, nuclear envelope as well as one of the link complex. So which is called amylin and BAF. And then inside of nucleus in chromatin also they have some myosin and actin. Yeah. So as you know, and then this chromatin, when they start to transcription, they have to open their promoter and then open their uh, activation site. So when the chromatin is highly cross-linked, cross they cannot transcript. They cannot make mRNA, messenger RNA. When this chromatin are opened, and then some RNA polymerization protein that can attach this chromatin structure and then they can start to produce messenger RNA. So people are thinking how this uh, integrin perception to the ECM like collagen can open the, open the chromatin structure and then start to gene activation. This is some total feature of the mechanobiology. So most people, many people, they think growth factor can play on majorly, majorly can play for modulating, modulating gene activation. So uh, basic idea is that when growth factor are perceived by growth factor receptor, and then from certain kind of bio, biochemical signaling, somehow they can open the dyschromatin and then start to exp express certain gene by RNA polymerization. But it will take around 5 to 10 seconds because this biochemical factor, they have to go from this cell membrane to the nucleus and then go inside of the nucleus. But when you think about this uh, um, mechanical biology, mechanical transduction, these all kind of protein are highly cross-linked, which means there is no gap. They are one chain. And then when you shift this integrin, also this nuclear envelope, they can shift, and then they can open or close this gene activation site. So for this kind of gene activation, people are thinking about some uh, what is the key biochemical molecule to start to produce more gene? So we can think about YAPTAS as a mechanical transduction co-transcription factor and then MRTF. So these are already known to link this kind of mechanical transduction and the gene activation. 
So the link between this uh, YAPTAS MRTF and then mechanical transduction is okay. This uh, shifting of the integrin that can change some uh, configuration of this chromatin structure, and then how they are maybe somehow they can open this chromatin, and then how this open site they are more enhanced. So more enhancing feature can be uh, derived by this YAPTAS or MRTF. So when you find another a co-terrestrial vector or terrestrial vector, they can highly link to this, this kind of mechanical transduction you can publish in cell. As you know, this YAPTAS is found in 2011 and then published in Nature. And the MRTF, maybe previous uh, 2005, as far as I know, they, they found. And then now 2021, so if it's time to um, find another uh, mechanical transductive, co-transfer vector or water transfer vector. And then now people are think about this kind of um, receptor. This is some ion channel receptor, but they can activate by mechanical Q, which means originally ion channel, the, they go in and go out, especially calcium, potassium, through the, some electrical Q. But this mechanical sensitive ion channel, they are stretched. And then this ion channel can open and then drive the calcium intracellular concentration. Okay, and then so now people are trying to understand how this mechanical sensitive ion channel, they are working for tuning the stem cell fate. And then the original uh, biochemical signaling pathway and then mechanical signaling pathway, also they can communicate each other, which is called crosstalk. Yeah. So when you make some kind of material, how the they can boost the cross factor. So when you make some cross factor loaded material, and then also you can tune the integrin, and then cross factor and integrin co signaling can happen, and then they can more synergistically increase your target gene expression. Let's say you have a BMP, bone morphogenic protein growth factor, loaded PCL fiber, and then your PCL fiber have certain nanotopology. The certain nanotopology, they can activate integrin, and then uh, the BMP loaded, coated on the nanotopology, they can activate the BMP growth factor receptor. And then this kind of integrin signaling from nanotopology, and then BMP to drive the course of bone degenerative biochemical signaling, they can genetically open the chromatin of the osteogenic gene. So this is uh, simply you can design and then think. So this is some um, uh, similar but another feature. So this is highlighting this cell cell interaction. So previously, people are trying to understand how this cell, single cell, sense the extracellular matrix and then certain growth factor. And then now you can also think about cell is not alone. Cell always they have close neighbors. So cell cell interaction can be mediated by cadherin, and that is also cadherin connected to alpha beta catenin, and then also linked to the nucleus envelop. So especially uh, when you think about the keratinocyte, this is the most, most outer layer of skin. And then, as you can imagine, they have very strong cell cell interaction. Or you can also think about the, your internal organs like liver or stomach or intestine. And then when you, when you think very uh, highly cross-link tissue, they are most, they have very tight, this cadherin junction. So, 
this sales interaction also can play a major role for tuning or for changing the cell phenotype. But, and then, when you think about the stem cell or macrophage, or fibroblast, actually fibroblast, stem cell macrophage, they are very, how can I say, a star shape or elongated shape, right? In that case, maybe they have less cell-cell interaction. But also, this, even though they have cell -cell, small cell-cell contact, also cell-cell interaction, they can tune the fibroblast phenotype or stem cell phenotype and the HRS, macrophage or immune cell phenotype. But most people, they focus on how the uh, keratinocyte epithelial cell or mucosa cell can interact with the other neighboring cell because they have more tight cell cell interaction. And then their next step is definitely they want to study how the loose cell cell contact cell like fibroblast or stem cell or macrophage also whether this cell cell interaction can play a major role or not. Maybe they will go further later. So Mm, you, when you design your experiment, also you can consider this point. So e easiest one is from the strong tight cell cell interaction cell, epithelial cell, liver cell, or other kind of stomach cell. But for, in the end, they want to study the loose cell cell contact cell, like fibroblast, stem cell, macrophage, or even neuron cell. So the cell cell interaction and then single cell and ischemic interaction and cross factor also they can harmony so we can call it like cross talk and then this is very uh, good youtube so to try to understand your knowledge this is a very good movie so i'm going to share this movie So as you know, this is a cell, not spread cell, and this is ECM. So you can imagine this collagen in your skin. And then this is some, let's say, fibroblast. Cell extraction force on the ECM, which can be felt by the other cell. can imagine right maybe some of them they are integral like this one and some of them just cross factor receptor or other thing is some ion channel right so many proteins are embedded in this cell membrane try to sense the extracellular matrix like collagen and then they need to uh, read they, they have to stretch out your cell membrane through this affecting right and this affecting they can be polymerized by g actin global actin and then this kind of alpha 2 3 or other kind of uh, complex protein mediate the filament polymerization and then filament to filament interaction and then they continue continuously sense the cell matrix to attach or to do something so this Integrin, they the originally they cannot attach all kind of substrate. They only sense RGD sequence. RGD is some amino acid sequence. So uh, mostly the cell they love to attach the RGD sequence. So even though they have many extracellular matrix, but when they sense the RGD sequence and then they 
try to anchor. But with the RGD, also cell can attach. Yeah, but this is called non-specific attachment. But normally in our body, the RGD is the most important amino sequence for attaching the cell. So if you fabricate your material, and then when you try to uh, co-culture the cell and material together, but they never, when they never see the good result of the cell adhesion, and then it's time to coat this kind of RGD, or com incorporate some peptide, protein, or other kind of you know, complex. So also collagen coating, fibrinated coating, and then RGD sequence coating, those are all contains the RGD. So this is a total feature of the mechanical biology. So, so yeah, I'm gonna share this video. So um, in any time when you do something and then you can think about how I, my material or my cell work can tune this kind of mechanical biology, mechanical transduction feature. And then it is, now it start to be bored. Yeah, so there are many texture. So you know, when you think of, so you can imagine the cell as a small city, especially when you think about the cytoskeleton dynamics. So why the cytoskeleton? So the skeleton is some kind of, um, how can I say, your concrete. So when you make the building, you need very uh, high, highly strong, strong stainless steel or some supporter. So a cytoskeleton is a supporter of your cell. So cytoskeleton is a highly dynamic network of filamentous protein exists in the 3D space to link all regions and components of the cell. All cells including bacteria, even bacteria, have a cytoskeleton in one form or another. This network is multifunctional, providing structure support 
for cell, a framework for active transport mechanism, and a system for the generation and transduction of mechanical force. So, cytoskeleton has three major roles, right? First one is structural support. Second one is framework for active transport mechanism. And the third one is a system for the generation and transduction of mechanical force. Yeah. Normally, people are thinking supporter and then transporter is okay. But nowadays, we are thinking about mechanical transduction system network. Cytoskeleton is analogous to both railroad tracks that connect various parts of the city and also the steel framework of a high-rise building. So cytoskeleton, they can link one city to other city as a railroad and then also a framework of the building. One enables the direct delivery of the passengers or cargo around the city while other ensure the building will not collapse <coughs> under its own weight. So for the dynamic internal environment. So think about the three laws of the cytoskeleton. One is a sub supporter, second one is transporter, third one is uh, transduction of the mechanical force. Okay. This can be an easy yeah, exam for the maintenance exam. In the same way, a cell that does not possess a cytoskeleton would be nothing more than a very soft or fluid correction of organism. Let's imagine when there is no cytoskeleton, this is some kind of just fluid like jelly. Right? So cell would be unable to support their own weight, let alone that of tissue or organ, and would lose essential signaling pathways, motility, cytokinesis, organ and movement, delivered components. For example, they would be incapable of carrying out the essential process that give rise to life. So without a skeleton, the cell cannot do anything. They cannot sense. They need the cytoskeleton to sense the ECM. And they need the skeleton to move the cell's signal component, protein. And then when they want to intercommunicate the other cell, also they have to exo exocytosis of certain protein. Also they need that skeleton. And then when they want to divide into daughter cell, also they need that skeleton. The cytoskeleton maintains the organism by linking together many cell components. Immediate communication across the entire cell and therefore has a tremendous impact on cellular function. So this is some three components of cytoskeleton. So when you say cytoskeleton, you have to, this is some uh, general term, cytoskeleton, and then consist, they consist of three, microtuber, actin filament, and the intermediate filament. Okay, so most people will familiar with this actin filament, right? Actin filament, they polymerize from global actin as a monomer. So they is minus n plus n, which means minus n, they are un unpolymerized, plus n, they are polymerized. Then the diameter is seven nanometer. Okay, and then as you can see, this is some epithelial cell, right? Epithelial cell, where is, the where is the actin filament? In the outermost layer, actin filament, right? And then actin filament also, they can link this kind of integrin or focus in protein and then nucleus. They can link together. So from this, how they are located, you can think the law of the actin filament. Why the law? They can make the shape of the cell and then they transduce the mechanical force to the nucleus. And then microtuber. Microtuber consists of alpha and beta tubuli. And then also this kind of gamma tubul RC protein. Also, they are highly dynamic. So minus n plus n, which means they are unpolymerized or polymerization. So microtuber is quite larger than active filament, three times, 25 nanometer. And then how they are linked? This Microtubule organ center. So they link this focal complex and then in the middle of the, the nucleus and then cell outer membrane. So you can think this microtuber also maybe they can mediate some transport. And then 
when they are divided like two daughter cells, also microtubule, they can play major role. This is the role of the microtubule. And interfilament. Interfilament, as you can see, there is no minus and plus end, which means they are not dynamic that much. They are very consistent. So we can use intermediate, intermediate filament as a marker of the cell. So if you see like GFAP or Viventin, what is that? And any kind of marker, Psi1, those are, most of them are intermediate filament. So intermediate filament is some kind of uh, tissue or cell specific protein. So maybe they can play a role as a specific target cell. As it, for example, when you think about neuron, maybe neuron, intermediate filament, they have certain load. And then when you think about the epithelial cell, keratin is also interfilament filament. Keratin also play a role to protect the outer, most in, outer harsh microenvironment. So intermediate filament is, a, is determining the load of the cell. So yeah, this is some three feature, three component of the cytoskeleton. So cytoskeleton consists of microtubule, active filament, and intermediate filament. And then what is the most smallest cytoskeleton? Active filament. The largest, microtubule. And then what is the non-dynamic cytoskeleton? This is intermediate filament. So let's say micro, uh, as a microfilament, as you know, actin is the most yeah, just microfilament and actin polymer, they are synonyms. So you can say microfilament or actin. So seven nanometer degrees, they form an extensive network throughout the cell and are primarily composed of actin, which is the most abundant protein in cell. So microfilament does not consist of only actin. Also, microtube, microfilament consists of actin and alpha actinin or alpha to 3 complex. So they have certain other protein except the actin. Also, microfilament and actin polymers, they are synonyms. But microfilament and actin is not synonym. Okay? So it's a little different. The microfilament are believed to provide protrusive and contractive force to the cell and assist in cell motility. They have very high compressive strength. However, actin building protein decrease this and allow bending. Microfilament act as a major signal transducer from the outside environment to the interior of the cell. Why? Microfilament is the most abundant and then they are very strong than others. So they play on many feature. When they move, when they sense and then when they endure the outer force, the microfilament can play a role. That is why they are outer positioned. And they also they link the nucleus and outer position cell membrane. And then this is some, uh, as a microtuber, we, most of people, they stain with affectin, right? Because affectin is the most abundant protein in microtuber. And then, as you know, in iTrend, we always, most of the time, we use phalloidin to stain the affectin. So phalloidin is like this. This is affectin, and then phalloidin, somehow, this toxin, they can strongly bind the affectin. And, and then, so people are making a phalloidin with rhodamine, and the phalloidin with Alex, Alexa, 4888 or other kind of biotin phalloidin, and then we can easily detect the affectin. So if we have certain affectin antibody, this antibody, first antibody, and then they need second antibody. But in case of phalloidin, they are, when they synthesize phalloidin with rhodamine, and then just one staining, they can reveal the affectin. And then one other fit or benefit of the phalloidin is that phalloidin is much smaller than the antibody. That would be typically be used to label the so protein for fluorescence microscope, which allows for much denser labeling of filament actin and much more detailed images as a higher resolution. 
So that is why phalloidin is welcomed as a biomaterial scientist or um, biology, science, biology scientist. They can produce more high resolution. So let's uh, uh, understand about the phalloidin history. Phalloidin belong to a class of toxin called uh, phallotoxins. Yeah, pallotoxins, which are found in the death cap mushroom. So this is some mushroom poison, okay? It is a rigid bicyclic hepatopeptide that is lesser after a few days when injected in the bloodstream. So this is very high toxin from the mushroom. So the major symptom of the phalloidin poisoning is acute hunger due to the destruction of the liver cell. It functions by binding and stabilizing filament of actin. They stabilize the actin because and effectively prevent the depolymerization of actin fiber. Due to its tight and selective binding to only actin, derived of phalloidin containing fluorescent tags are used widely in microscope to visualize actin. So if you treat the just phalloidin, not synthetic or just naturally derived phalloidin, and then you can activate the affecting polymerization because they prevent the depolymerization. Okay? So this is a, another feature of the phalloidin. But most of the phalloidin we use at the moment is a synthetic phalloidin. And then we dye phalloidin as a as a lodamine, as a red, or 488 as a green. So our phalloidin is not derived with the mushroom at the moment. We are synthesized. And then they, the company, Thermo and other company, they provide us. And then let's say microtubule. So microtubule, yeah, or you can think minus and plus n, which means they are dynamic. And then consists of alpha and beta tubuli majorly. Size is larger, largest inside the skeleton protein. And then they have tubular structure. So the meaning of the microtubule means micro-sized tubule. Tubule means they have hollow structure inside. Okay? So you can think maybe the hollow structure, they cannot shrink that much, right? Uh, effect in micro microfilament. Microfilament, they don't have any hollow structure. They are highly close link each other. So the different feature of the microtubule and microfilament is a hollow structure. And then also, when they make the microtubule, they use GTP, uh, ATP. So GTP, GDP, oh. consume ATP, they make the polymerization, and then they rescue the microtubule. Because microtubule, um, <coughs> microtubules are the largest such skeleton element, 25 nanometer in depth, substantially longer than microfilament. Yeah, longer. This filament play an important role in cell communication and cytokinesis. Microtubules are formed through the lateral association of between 12 and 13 tubulin protofilament, which arrange to form a very stiff and hollow filament structure. Microtubules are also highly dynamic, undergoing rapid cycle of polymerization and depolymerization, a process known as dynamic instability. Microtuber emanate from a microtubule organizing center. They are derived from this microtubule organizing center where their minus end is minus end is embedded and the plus then grow toward the cell periphery. So that's why microtubule, this MTOC, sometimes they are stained to distinguish the cell polarization. Cell polarization means how they want to go, where they want to go. They want to go front, or six o'clock, six, or three, or nine. So this MTOC, when they stain to certain site of the cell, which means they want to go there. This MTOC staining, they derive where the cell want to go. Amongst their most important function is to ensure that chromosomes are equally distributed among the daughter cell. And then movement of cilia and fragilla is also microtubule dependent. 
and then transporting my molecules. Very important. So this is a cilia. So cilia structure, yeah, also they have microtubule here. Okay, and then uh, hollow. So where where is the cilia? All cells have cilia. Even though they are not strongly prominent, but stem cell also they have cilia, or macrophage, they have cilia. But your when you think about the hair cell, they are most they have cilia. And then your how can I say smell, smell sensing nose cell, sensory cell, they have cilia. So the cilia consists of microtubule. So and then also you can imagine why the role of the cilia. The cilia can sense the fluid, how the blood flow, how the uh, shear force are mediated. So cilia can sense the speed of the flow, flow, blood flow, or your intestinal flow, or other kind of flow. So microtuber, they have many role, chromatin dividing, and then move of the cilia and flagella, and then transporting molecule. And then they are mostly uh, derived from the MTOC. So when the, this MTOC, they have certain site, and then when they want, when transport something, and then from MTOC, they make and polymerize this microtubule. So microtubule as an intracellular protein transporter. So let's say new protein are made First, from the DNA, they are transcript. Transcript to the mRNA. In the mRNA, they in endosomal reticulum, through the ribosome, they make the protein. And then through the Golgi complex, they are more modified by glycoprotein or lipid. And then now they are ready for going out or ready for be used intracellular cell organisms. And then how this protein go outside or go inside? Maybe when they go, especially when they go outside, they need microtubule. They have to transfer to the outside of the cell. And then also when they go certain way, like mitochondria, maybe um, diffusion or they can use microtubule. And then let's say this is a factor. They have to go nucleus. How they go? Maybe from diffusion or microtuber, they can mediate to transport somewhere, and then they can go inside. So this is a microtubule staining, and this is actin staining and DAPI. Then you can see this cell divided into neural cell, and then microtuber they are abundant in the middle of the nucleus chromatin. So as you can see, this effect in also they are have some low for dividing cell, and then as you can see, effect in is outer and then from the center and outside. In microtuber, they are a little bit, but mostly mostly they are abundant in the center area for dividing the, the nucleus. So one uh, familiar feature of tubulin is beta three tubulin for neuron as a neuron marker. So this is a beta 3 tubulin staining. So this is a well-known neuron marker. So class 3 beta tubulin, otherwise they made beta 3 tubulin, tubulin beta 3 3, the microtubule element of the tubulin family found almost exclusive in neurons. And then test itself. In humans, they are coded in top 3 genes. It's possible to use monoclonal antibody and immunohistochemistry chemistry to identify neurons in samples of the brain, separate neurons from glial cell, which do not express the class three beta tubulin. So glial cell means not neuron cell, like uh, except the neuron in brain, they have astrocyte, microglia, oligodendrocyte, so which are glial cell. So neuron and glial cell, they two different feature. And then when you distinguish the neuron in the brain or your spinal cord tissue, you can stain with beta tubulin. So why the beta tubulin is a one type of the tubulin. And then, and then they have the same role as a tubulin, like they can transport some neuro neurotransmitter like GABA, 
or other kind of neurogenic and neurotransmitter cytokines. And then also they have tubulin structure, they have hollow. And then now is the third type of the cytoskeleton, intermittent filament. Most are abundant and used for cell marker. Intermittent filament are the third type of the cytoskeletal filament and then represent a large group of the filament that share structural and functional similarity. Five types of intermittent filament have been described. And although each type is composed of different monomer proteins, the mechanism of assembly is consistent and produce filament of around 10 nanometer in width. Up to 50 different proteins may be incorporated into intermittent filament. Intermittent filament form an elaborate network not only in the cytoplasm, but also in nucleus in the form of the lamina. So in the inside of the nucleus, there is also another intermediate filament, which is called lamina. And then they are highly flexible. What is the different feature of the intermediate filament than others? Microtuber, active filament, and in, in <coughs> microtuber, microfilament, they are not flexible. But this is more highly flexible. Actually, sorry, there is, there is less flexible microtuber and then intermediate. Uh, Microtuber and microfilament, less flexible, but it's higher flexible. And yet much more stable than both microfilament and microtuber because they are not depolymerized or polymerized. They are not, they are not, not, they are not dynamic that much. So we can say more stable in terms of dynamic depolymerization or polymerization, but they are more highly flexible. And interfilament have no known role in cell motility. So Cell motility, there is no relevance. However, they do provide mechanical stability to the cell and region of cell cell contact. So, this is some intermediate filament example. Keratinocyte, the most abundant cell in our skin, outermost skin, keratin. The name of the keratinocyte is another name of the epithelial cell, and then why the epithelial cell can name is a keratinocyte, which means they have more keratin. So keratin is the interfilament filament of the epithelial cell, outermost skin cell. And then bimentin is a mesenchymal cell. Most of them have a bimentin. And cinnamon, GFAB, as you know, astrocyte marker. So this is an example of the interfilament filament and cell type. So bimentin, mesenchymal cell, GFAB, astroglia cell, muscle cell, desmin, synonym, cells, skeletal muscle cell, neurons, periferium, nestin, also CNS, or muscle precursor cell, neurofilament, neurons, intermexin, internonymin, neuron, and tridentin, glia cell, and lamins, as you know, in the inside of the nucleus, and lamins. Another, like, same as before. So, you can stain this kind of intermediate filament to distinguish the which type of cell you are detecting. So, if you have a stem cell and then you want to derive this stem cell to a certain cell type, and then the final step is you have to confirm this cell is uh, derived to the designated cell type. So, in that case, you can find what kind of intermediate filament is abundant in your target cell, differentiation cell? And then you can stain them. So this kind of three types of the three types of the skeleton. So why is that? Microfilament, actin, most of the actin, actin polymers, composed of actin. And then second one is microtubule. Microtuber. And third one is intermediate filament. So microfilament is a, they are very uh, affecting gelatin polymerization, and then they link the in integral receptor and the nucleus. And then depending on they, what is the role of the, role of the microfilament, they can transmit mechanical force. And then they can make the shape of the cell and then they are highly involved in motility. When they migrate, they are involved. This is a microfilament. And the microtube, 
they have a tubal structure, like ho they have hole, so they transport certain molecule, and then they are involved in dividing the two daughter cell. Okay, and then the beta tubuli is a marker of the neuron that we are using, and then intermediate filament, they are uh, distinguish distinguishable uh, protein in certain type of cell. And then we can use specific intermediate, intermediate protein for distinguishing the cell type. And then maybe intermediate filament, they are major role for certain type of cell, like neuron and muscle, or other kind of cytosine. So let's try to remember these three types of the cytoskeleton. And then this cytoskeleton structure, and then general, they have a structure support, but still, framework of many of modern building is designed and constructed to survive a multitude of force. Also, external force such as wind, earthquake, must be withstood, while internal force such as weight must be distributed evenly throughout the structure. In a similar way, these three types of skeleton must withstand the vast range of the external and internal force acting on the cell. Aside from a certain degree of flexibility, the framework of building within building is not a dynamic structure, but this is where that skeleton being extremely dynamic differ. Cell, they are alive, so they can change anytime, but building, they cannot change. So this is some different feature of the building and then cell side skeleton. But in terms of structure support, they have common sense. With the exception of intermediate filament, such skeleton filament are constantly undergoing cycle of polymerization and depolymerization. So intermediate filament, they um, maybe when they make, initially when they make the intermediate filament, they have to polymerize. But once they are make, made, they never unpolymerize or polymerization. So when describing actin filament or microfilament assembly, this process is referred as a treadmilling, which means there are dynamic inst instability. They are dynamically unpolymerized and polymerized. Unlike building cells are alive in entirety, they are highly dynamic themselves. They are consistently interacting with their mic microenvironment and responding accordingly. They might change their shape or shape of their nucleus. They may commence cell migration, enter a state of the rest, or undergo process of program cell death. In order to meet with requirement of the cell, cells and skeleton need to be equally dynamic. So from their cell, any kind of cell behavior, this status skeleton should be involved in any ways. So for example, during cell migration, the status skeleton rapidly change to produce a polarized cell with a front or reading edge and a back or trailing edge. So when you have a cell, they have a cell when they go this way, this right side we can call reading or front edge. This back side we can call back or trailing edge. Okay? The rapid development of microfilament network at the reading edge in a region known as the lamellopodia. Generate protrusive force and help the cell to move forward while simultaneously retracting the cell from the rear. Retracting means the cell have to uh, wrap up their cell body and then go to the next, next right side. So this is called retracting the cell from the rear. So, and in another example, during cell division, chromosome must separate and several organisms must be redistributed among the daughter cell. This is followed by a pinching of the cell membrane into two. This process requires a very dynamic skeleton that can rapidly depolymerize to allow old structure to be dissolved in new structure to be formed. Additionally, when mechanical stress is applied to cell, microtubules rapidly reorient themselves and then acting stress fiber, mic microfilament, increase in density in order to reinforce their mechanical strength. Cells hold process such as cilia, fragilia also move because of this dynamic or such skeleton rhythm. 
So they are mixed the lower of the three different type of cell, microfilament, microtuber, and then uh, those are anyhow they are involved in cell dynamics. When they say move, when they injure the outer force, this uh, majorly two component of the cytoskeleton they are responsible. So maybe you guys a little little can see this kind of term. Lamella podium and filopodium. Actually, the lamella podium is a singulum of the lamella podia. And then propodium is a singulum of the propodia. So propodia is, let's say, this cell. At a glance, you can see cell where they want to go. Right side, right? And then on the right side, they have focal adhesion. And then they pull this outer body, and then for frontier leading edge, they have this lamellar podium. And the lamellar podium, this is, what is this? Red thing is affected, okay? And then also, filler podium is like finger, you can touch and sense the extracellular matrix. So this is, maybe their uh, protein composition is same, but from the Mm. Morphogenic feature, this is called filopodium, and this is called lamellopodium. Okay, so normally we have to use pronoun, so filopodia and lamellopodia. And then let's say how the cell moves. This very interesting movie. So yes, a focal adhesion dynamics in human small cell lung cancer carcinoma expressing GFB tech paxilin visualized with a microscopy. So as you know, paxilin is one protein of the focal adhesion complex, and then they tag GFP. GFP means they are, they are excited by green fluorescence. Let's see how they express. So one this cell. They, they made the paxilin, they are uh, visualized by green, okay? And then we can simultaneously track how the paxilin is made. This is an important feature. And as you know, this JCI is a very good journal, in fact, around 15 or 19. And then, let's see how the cell behaves. Maybe red one is cytoplasm staining, and the green one is paxilin expression. Okay. So control cell, they are highly expressed, and then SIHFP. So when they knock knock down certain type of the protein, they have different feature. When they knock down MAP2K, somehow they never migrate, right? They only have strong paxilin outside. And then when they knock down this one, they little bit migrate. But enhance focal adhesion immediately. So like this feature, uh, yeah, they are Unmigrated nowadays. So any anyhow, the important thing is that cell they always move, and they always make the new focal adhesion complex. So you can think how the cell sense the material, how they have to move, and then they have to sense, and then they use integrin to make the focal adhesion. So this is a good movie to understand the, how the cell senses the ECM. So cell never be static, okay? 
they are dynamic. So like this, they always move. This is an important background when you understand the feature of this mechanobiology. When, when we not blocking the inter alpha phi integrin, alpha phi is one feature of the integrin, so there's no alpha phi, and then they cannot sense the ECM, right? Even though they try to move to sense the how the ECM is stiff or soft, they cannot sense because they are losing their hand. Machine 2 knocked down. Machine 2 is between the effective filament, this is some motor to drive the force. Yeah, they cannot move. Affecting by themselves, they cannot move. So even though this integrity is alive, they cannot sense the force. Tallin. Tallin is one kind of protein, especially their adherent to the beta integrin. Also, even though myosin is working to sense the exoskeletal matrix, but there is no focal adhesion, so they never touch, feel the exoskeletal matrix. Okay. So, lamellopodia. The lamellopodium, the plural lamellopodia. The lamellopodium is singular, plural lamellopodia from Latin of word like lamina is a thin sheet. Thin, thin sheet from the outer edge, within edge. Pod means foot. So the meaning is thin sheet foot. Is a cytoskeleton protein acting projection on the leading edge of the cell. So when you term lamellopodia, the, you, you can feel the, where they want to go. And then the reading edge can be called lamellopodia. Okay? It contains a quasi, quasi means some fake two dimensional actin mesh. As a thin layer, the whole structure propels the cell across the substrate. Within the lamellopodia are leaves of actin called microspikes, which, which when they spread beyond the lamellopodium frontier is called philopodia. Philopodia is like finger. Lamellopodium is a bone of actin nucleation in the plasma membrane of the cell, and it is the primary area of actin incorporation or microfilament formation of the cell. This is an important feature. What is the role of the lamellopodium? Lamellopodium is a bone of actin nucleation. So from the lamellopodium, from this side, they make the actin newly. And primary area of the actin incorporation or microfilament formation of the cell. So when they want to go this way, from this lamellopodia, they make the actin. And then they make like perpendicular, like this parallel actin as well as perpendicular actin filament. This perpendicular actin filament is called philopodia. And then this uh, parallel actin filament is called lamellopodium. And then from the lamellopodium is calcium site allow cell to move at speed of 10 to 20 micrometer per minute of epithelial cell surface. So, so why is the cell motility speed? Yeah, mostly it is tens of micrometer per minute. And the philopodia, philopodia by SEM, you can feel this kind of a finger structure. So if you see this one, this is some um, parallel filament. Parallel filament is called lamellopodia. And then this perpendicular filament is called philopodia. So philopodia are slender cytoplasmic projections that extend beyond the leaching edge of the lamellopodium in minority cell. With lamellopodium, actin leaves are known as microspikes. When they expand beyond the lamellopodia, are known as philopodia have loading, sensing, migration, and cell interaction. To close a wound in vertebrate, growth factors stimulate the formation of the pilipodia in fibroblast to direct fibroblast migration and old closure. In developing neurons, pilipodia extend from the growth cone at the leading edge. In neuron deprived from the pilipodia by partial inhibition of active filament polymerization, growth cone extension continues as normal 
but the action of the growth is destructive and highly irregular. Pelipodia-like projection have also been linked to the dendrite creation when new synapses are formed in the brain. In macrophage, pelipodia act as a phagocyte to <coughs> tentrix and pull bound object toward the cell for phagocytosis. So for pelipodia, you can think this is some kind of your hook or finger. So from the macrophage, they have to uptake the uh, non-cell bacteria or the other kind of debris. So they need hook to uptake the bacteria, which is called phagocytosis. Also, pelipodia, they, they are needed for as a neuron. Neuron direction. Neuron is very important. They have certain direction. So pelipodia, they direct the neuron direction. And then, in, in case of wound healing or the fibroblast, they have to migrate very fast. And then, they need pelipodia. So from the initial part, we are talking about some cytoskeleton. This is some real protein. Microfilament, microtubule, intermediate filament. And then now, lamellopodia, epilopodia is some kind of appearance structure, which are consist of actin filament, actin microtubule, and then intermediate filament. Those three can be involved to make this kind of filopodia feature or lamellopodia feature, feature. So you have to distinguishably think this idea. Lamellopodia and filopodia they can consist of three types of the cytoskeleton, but majorly by actin and microfilament, actin filament or affecting. Yeah, this is the end of, end of this today's lecture. So, any question? Okay, thank you. See you next week.